here we do have our data section, which we um, are quite proud of. And uh, here we feature different data sets and you can again see um, the, the kind of data sets we differentiate. So we do feature statistical data um, and we feature um, more recently, I would say, not that extensively yet spatial data. And uh, statistical data are in this case, mainly indices, uh, country rankings, uh, numbers of tenure security or performance indexes. How, how is tenure security perceived in certain countries, et cetera. And this data is actually um, assorted or grouped by uh, the organization uh, featuring this data set. So I would click on um, statistical data and um, you would see the different data sets we feature, but also you can actually search these by different keywords. So if I would look for customary tenure, for instance, I can just search for tenure, click on customary tenure, filter our data sets, and then would um, get the, the um, indicators and also, and that's the point, uh, visualized a bit. So here we have country rankings. Uh, we see the first uh, five countries and the lowest performing countries. And um, if we look at other data sets, um, statistical ones, we would have kind of maps um, where you could look for indicators and then see performance indexes on this map. So we do have already in the data section a little bit of representation of figures, which makes it way more digestible than just producing a table. Um, on the contrary, if we talk about our spatial data, um, here we would have real... Um, I guess you might know the landmark or landmark map, which is quite um, popular. Um, we would actually have um, actual data like tenure ownership, um, conservancies, communal areas, uh, spatially represented on a map. So it's different than having a country uh, ranked by an indicator. Um, yeah, I think I don't have to go into much more detail because I mean, if most of the attendees here work with data, probably I'm just boring people anyway. Um, but I can just invite you to maybe have a look at our data section because I think there are just there are quite interesting data sets you could work with. Um, however, we uh, realized at the land portal exactly what I, the point I made in the beginning. We should kind of find ways how we can communicate data more effectively than just hiding it uh, in the data section. Um, and also, I mean, we all working with land, we know it's not only about statistical figures, um, uh, country rankings or whatever, it's about people, people uh, living on the land, people owning uh, the land or not owning it, uh, the struggle for resources, um, for equality and, yeah, representation. And this together with the audience's desire to get maybe digested data, we came up with story maps at the land portal. And if you look at the data section in the second uh, lowest uh, of these links, we do have a section on data stories. Um, and we feature a variety of data stories from all over the globe. Um, about carbon sequestration in communal areas, um, the change of land use and uh, agriculture production with the global maize boom in Thailand. Um, we have stories about pastoralists in Iran, um, a lot of uh, on communal areas in South Africa and the differences between, um, yeah, um, former communal areas and freehold lands. Uh, we have them in different languages. Um, and also, I think it's a beautiful example on how we can frame a narrative and communicate it. 
but also how we can mix a different data together. So we work with visuals, we work with statistical data, we work with spatial data, um, we work with um, qualitative data. So we can mix videos and interviews and pictures and show a map where people live for or the resources they fight for um, or where people are expropriated and then tell their story. Then I think that's the compelling thing about um, story maps. Um, yeah. So in the past, um, we were just featuring data and now we at the land portal moved on to these uh, more interactive ways of present narratives and also people's perspectives. Yeah, it's also a way more inclusive uh, way to represent data and land uh, just than producing figures. So we can communicate these narratives and to populate our data section with these data stories in the past, we ran certain data contests per year. And I think with this, I can just hand over to you, 